All right, guys, welcome back. Today, I am going to be showing you how to create 100% procedural surface imperfections, like smudges, scratches, and spots. On top of that, you will also learn how to use the math and color ramp nodes to mix together and limit textures. If you are looking for something to make your render look just a bit more photorealistic, or if you just need something to pass the time, I hope you enjoy either way. Let's do this. Right here is a very good example. You can see a smudge right here and all sorts of splotches and spots, as well as a few scratches here and there. I applied it to this chest pawn over here, so it really works for any material. All right, so start up a new file, and I'm going to choose an object to apply this material to. In this case, I will choose a icosphere, and I will turn up the subdivisions to three. Now I can just pop over to the shading tab, hit new, and we have a new material here. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is add a few textures. So right here, I'm gonna add a noise texture. And if you have the Node Wrangler add-on applied, you can control shift click it to view it. So this is going to be the smudges. If I just turn up the distortion a little bit, you can see it kind of looks like fingerprints. I'm also gonna turn up the detail. So if I add a Musgrave now, this will determine where the smudges appear. So instead of just having this whole smudgy mess, um, this Musgrave te texture will limit where that is. So if I turn up the detail here and the dimension, turn that down a little bit, I now have this. So here's where the math node comes in. If I go ahead and add a math, um, and then I can switch this to subtract, now it's going to subtract the first material from the second one. So, I, so if I put this here and that there, it'll now subtract. It'll now subtract it. So if I view this, you can now see that it only smudges in parts now. And now, um, so here's where the color ramp comes in. If I add this color ramp here and just limit it, you can see now there's less areas of smudges. So now we have this subtract node right here and it's subtracting one of the textures from the other. If I go ahead and add another noise texture, this one just adds a little extra detail. This one's not extremely important, but it is what I had in the example there. Now feel free to mix and match these how you want. I'm just showing you kind of kind of the process of making a material like this. So I'm going to put this in the bottom one and this in the top one, and I'm gonna to switch to multiply, which does exactly what it sounds like. It multiplies them together. So now you can't see much here, but you can see now this adds a little bit of texture to it. So now if I wanna limit this in there, I wanna bring this up get more spots like that I can do that for now I think that looks pretty good like that so now we have our smudges and spots and we can change this as we feel as we see fit so now that we have our smudges set up kind of go ahead and view that again so now that we have this these smudges set up now I'm gonna move on to the scratches so I'm going to plug this into the surface and you're going to notice nothing's happened yet because I haven't plugged this into anything. I'm going to add a Voronoi, a Voronoi texture, and I'm also going to add a bump. I'll plug this bump into the normal and what this does is it adds fake geometry. Plug the distance into the height and you see we have something like this going on. Now if I switch this from F1 to distance edge, you get a material that looks kind of like this. Now what we want is we want just the cracks there. So I'm gonna add another color ramp and I'm gonna limit it like that. Control T if you have the Node Wrangler add-on applied and swap this to object coordinates. Now what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to add another noise texture or you could use a texture, one of the other noise textures to do this. And then I'm also gonna add a mix RGB. So what I'm gonna do now and I'm going to plug that into the bottom socket of the mix. It's using this to determine 
the cracks it makes them a little less uniform and straight and a little more wobbly like that so now i'm going to turn the scale down on this the scale up on this and now what i can also do is i can plug this noise texture into the strength so what that's doing is it's deciding where these scratches show up i'm going to add a color ramp all right so now you can see that all these are showing but as i move the black up here less and less scratches show so i want something like this just little scratches here and there so i'm going to turn this down to make it a little little bit less intense and now we have the occasional scratch so now that we have the scratches and the smudges done um, we're gonna have to think about spots and splotches so I'm going to add yet another noise texture and I'm going to view this one okay so now that I have it viewed I'm gonna turn up the distortion a little bit turn up the scale and here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna add another color ramp and I'm going to limit it like this so now you can see we have little spots here and there now you can turn this down just to make it a little bit less intense and now we're going to add our final math node and this one is going to be adding it's going to be adding this texture and this texture together so what we get is we get these spots we get these spots here and there added on top of our smudges And now you can go back and forth tweaking the color ramps, adding new ones. You see here there's not one. Again, a color ramp there. But this is going to all be plugged into the roughness. So if I put the BSDF onto the surface, you can see that now it's really hard to tell. If I turn the color down, you can see a little bit better. You can see now we have these smudges, that effect. And what do you do if your material is a little less shiny? Well, you can add yet another color ramp so you can see here I'm using these textures and I'm mixing them whichever way I want based on how I want them to appear so you can see I have a subtract a multiply and an add and I also have a mix shader I'm just basically taking these materials that look like something like this noise texture looked like smudges and I'm mixing that with a musgrave which determines where the smudges appear and I'm subtracting and multiplying and adding them together until I get a final thing. And now it has scratches, and now it has these smudges. Okay, so if your material is a little, little less shiny, you take a color ramp, you take the bottom, you move this up. And if you want this to be duller, you can do that. Honestly, I think for a rougher material, it looks better if your smudges are actually shinier than the material. So you can turn this down. And now you get these nice smudges. So it really depends on what type of material you're choosing. Another thing that I did is I took this output right here, this output right before the color ramps plugged into the roughness, and I used that also as a bump. And this was very, very subtle. It doesn't make a huge difference if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. But you would plug this into the normal of that and you would plug this into the height. So now you have those smudges appearing and those splotches appearing as bump data. So you're definitely gonna want to use either a color ramp or change the strength. I recommend a strength of about 0.01. So now those smudges appear a little more, I don't know what the word is, a little more real, They're, they kind of bump out like an actual smudge would. Like a fingerprint, you know, you got oils on your hands and whatever. So now if you just limit that, you can always limit that. You do whatever you want. And the great thing about this is it looks super complicated now, but if you know what everything does, if you go ahead and just rename these, I'll call this one spots. If you rename these and maybe make no groups and stuff you you know what's going on in the material and you can use this for all sorts of stuff you can change color ramps up you can change parameters you can change everything and it'll still 
work because it's not a texture, it's procedural. So yeah, that is the 100% procedural surface imperfections. Hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry this video is so long. <laughs> I'm editing this right now, it's like 10 and a half minutes, which is not how long my, nor my normal videos are. So anyways, if you guys did enjoy, please uh, consider subscribing and yeah. See you guys next time.